What's up, my common comrades? From all of us here at Variant to all of you, we wish you a very Merry Christmas and a wonderful holiday, surrounded by family and friends. And to celebrate the season, we're bringing you guys one of the best Christmas specials ever released in comics, and that would be the Green Lantern Larf Lee's Christmas Special by Jeff Johns and Brett Booth. This comic is so good and really captures the true intended spirit of Christmas. At least we think so, but we'll let you guys judge for yourself whether Larf Lee's learns the right lessons. Now, before we dive into the story, some of you may be wondering who this Larf Lee's is in the first place. Well, he's an Orange Lantern. The only Orange Lantern, as a matter of fact. You see, he's billions of years old and the first being to control the power of Avarice, aka Greed. Because of this, he is the keeper of the Orange Lantern Corps. And since he's too greedy to share the Orange Lantern rings, he has kept all of the Orange Lantern power to himself, meaning the Orange Lantern Corps only consists of him because of Greed. Just wanted to break that down because who the character is and what he's all about is important to the story. With that said, let's get into it. The story starts off at Lar Fleece's house slash junkyard where he wakes up in his bed on Christmas morning, saying to himself, by Sinestro's whiskers, it's finally here. Oh, lovely giving Christmas. The most wonderful, amazing, gluttonous day of the entire year. The day every hairless being on this strange but alluring planet is given whatever they desire. It is time to open my presents. Why, it shouldn't take more than 18 hours to unpeel each one of my gifts from this list, as we see his massive list. But when he gets downstairs and looks under the Christmas tree, he says, no, we've been robbed. The presents are gone. Who would dare steal from me? Who would steal from the almighty Santa Claus? He then says, the Christmas barter, the cookies would left out for the red suited giant. The cookies are still here. First and foremost, it's hilarious that Larf Lees believes Santa Claus is real. He continues to say, the cookies, the milk, the undisturbed soot in the chimney. Why am I beginning to suspect that Santa Claus never came at all? Why wouldn't he come? I've made my list. I put up the lights and stockings and the strange offering I've been told he demands. I've even built the cabin to house my presents and the chimney to signal him I'm here. Where is he? He then sees Santa Claus in a Christmas parade. So of course he makes his way there on an orange lantern devil sleigh of reindeers, screaming Santa Santa Claus, where are my things? I know you are mighty and powerful, but so am I. He then lifts Santa Claus out of the parade when he realizes it's not the real Santa Claus, saying, you're a decoy, where is the real Santa Claus? He then spots a department store with a Santa Claus running in, so he takes his orange lantern hell sleigh inside the department store, only to see a bunch of Santa Clauses. He then says, what trickery is this? Is there no end to the length Santa Claus would go to deceive me? Which of you is the real Santa Claus? Tell me before I spill your innards. A little boy then says, I know where Santa Claus is, is, everyone knows the real Santa Claus lives at the North Pole. Larflees then asks, which way is that? He then heads to the North Pole to find Santa Claus, but after looking for hours, finds nothing. At which point he screams, show yourself before I turn your land into steam. Hal Jordan then shows up saying, we've got enough problems with the ice melting on its own Larflees, so holster the ring, as Hal Jordan grabs him with a polar bear construct. Larflees then frees himself with an orange lantern Christmas tree saying, Green Lantern, have you come here to protect Santa Claus? Are you willing to die for him? Because I will kill you if you stand in my way. He replies, I don't doubt you'll try, but you'll be throwing away your energy for nothing. And if I know one thing about you, it's that you hate doing anything for nothing. Larflees then says, why are you interrupting my hunt for your devious fat man, Green Lantern? He replies, because you terrorized the Christmas parade and department store full of people. Now you're threatening to melt the North Pole. So what's your problem? Larflees then tells him, my problem is this, as he shows Hal his Christmas list. He then tells Hal Jordan, you told me if I was good, I'd get everything on this list. I followed your terrestrial rules mostly. Yet Santa Claus brings me nothing. Hal then says, Larflees, Santa is not real. At which point he replies, you try to hide your planet's greatest asset? Hal says, everyone above the age of six on Earth knows it's a story. Larflees replies, why would such a story be made? Hal tells him, for fun. This day isn't about Santa Claus. It's about having Christmas spirit. And having Christmas spirit is the most important thing. Larflees asks, having Christmas spirit, how does one attain the Christmas spirit? They then go back to Larflees' junkyard where Hal tells him, I thought your collection was just a pile of junk. But look Looking closer, I see presents, as he finds toys kids would enjoy. He then proceeds to go with Larflees donating his stuff to children, saying, do you want Christmas spirit? I'll show you how to get it. Christmas isn't about making that pile of stuff in your backyard bigger. It's about giving to those who actually need. It's about the exact opposite of the power that flows through your ring. It's about generosity. And when you use generosity to make others smile, that means you have Christmas spirit. And right now, thanks to giving all your stuff away, you have it. Larflees says, I don't think I like Christmas spirit very much, as they come back to an empty junkyard. Hal asks, but you like like stuff. Larflees responds, I have to have it. Hal asks why. He tells him, this list is important. But Christmas isn't over. Santa could still come. Hal says again, Santa's not real. Larflees tells him, yes he is. 
He has to be. Hal tells him, you don't listen, do you? You only hear what you want to hear. He replies, doesn't everyone? Hal then says, you have a ring that can make anything you can imagine. What do you need something like a hovercraft for? As he sees a hovercraft is on his wish list. Larflees replies, to drive on land and sea? Hal then leaves, but not before saying, do yourself a favor, Larflees. Look at that list. Look at it close and ask yourself, do I really need it? Larflees then goes back into his house, looks over his list before the comic zooms in, showing one of the things he wanted was a family. As he looks at it with tears in his eyes before hugging a pillow, by himself next to the fireplace as the story ends. Which is one of the saddest things I've seen in the comic book. Sure, he wanted a ton of stuff he didn't need, but he also was counting on Santa to give him a family. It's actually pretty heartbreaking. The story does such a great job of bringing proper perspective to the true spirit of Christmas by pointing out how easy it is to lose sight of what's really important and meaningful in life which is to share life with those we love, a gift that is far more valuable than any material thing we could get or even give. With that in mind, we hope you enjoyed this Christmas story, and we want you to know that we have nothing but love for all of you. Merry Christmas, Variant Nation. We'll see you next time.